What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World Podcast. And today we're going to be jumping into week seven, Thursday night football prime, Jaguar Saints. We're going to be talking about Derek Hughes' car. Uh, Skip Bayless had a lot of things he wanted to say about him, but you know, pretty much for me, with my experience with, you know, Derek Carr, aka Derek Hughes Carr, since he's been, you know, even with the Raiders, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where he's been. He's always been, you know, a guy that you know he's going to do something wild in a clutch situation. Now that tip pick six, you can't really blame the quarterbacks for tip pick sixes, but it just seems like they follow Derek Carr anywhere he goes. Like pick sixes are just always around. And it's something that's really, really crazy with this guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like all around him, dude. Like you just know a pick six is coming, dude. You know what I'm saying? But listen, in all honesty, there was a couple things that I want to point out uh, with this game. It was good to see Michael Thomas, AKA Slant Boy, actually lay out for that touchdown. I love the fact that they threw it out, but you know, through the fade route, but they tried it again later. And this is the problem, right? Michael Thomas is not what Michael Thomas was before. Obviously, injuries has robbed him of some years and some time on the field. So you're not going to get that. And players don't fear him. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when he was really, really good, he was taking slants for six. Now, I know a lot of people from New Orleans are going to go raging. You guys are always raging 504, this and that. You know, oh, bro, he was really good. He wasn't, though. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, when it comes to, like, the top tier, now, I, again, when you could take a slant that was thrown by Drew Brees for six, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, he, Drew Brees, later in his career, had a noodle arm. So he couldn't really get the ball down the field, and everybody knew that. And yet, still, they wouldn't defend Michael Thomas. So he had an unbelievable year where he was just catching two-yard passes and going for six, like 90, 80 yards. It was wild stuff going on, right? As soon as there are other routes to be run, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, it's like, they're not... He's like a turtle, bruh. Like, nobody was really like, oh my God, we gotta, yo, this guy's gonna beat us over the top. The dude was a slant master. So, him coming back right now and looking healthy, I love the way the New Orleans crowd went crazy when he scored. It meant a lot, but just hear me out, though. The dude had three receptions on seven targets, and he had 42 yards. Okay, so... You can blame Derek Carr. You can say Derek Carr sucks, a.k.a. Derek used Carr. You can say whatever you want about him. But objectively speaking, right, Michael Thomas is not what it's all about, dude. Olave is seriously the future of the franchise, and he had 15 targets and only caught seven passes. So you got to think about that. Like, people are not really understanding. Dudes out here are running around screaming out 504, and Olave had 15 targets and caught seven. Kamara, the running back, had 14 targets. He caught 12. So look, you can say, you know, Derek Carr is not the most accurate quarterback. You could say a whole lot of stuff. Because if we look at his stat line, right, 33 of 55. He had 301 yards, Derek Carr, a.k.a. Derek used Carr. One touchdown, one interception. He was sacked once. Okay? 36.9 QBR, 73%, uh, you know, quarterback rating. So we, we understand that there's a lot going on here. We also understand that he's not leading this team anywhere. See, this is the problem that people don't seem to get. When I tell you that a dude sucks, a dude sucks, all right? Now, he's a great guy. Like, if you look at him on X, you know, his post, everything, very positive, very, very good guy. But he's not taking you anywhere. And you have to understand that. And that's what's weird about the NFL, right? We have, like, these miracle stories that come out of nowhere sometimes. But let's just be real. The people that are going to win, we know they're going to win. Like Mahomes, we knew he was going to win. You know, with the Baltimore Ravens defense in 2000, that defense was out of control. We knew they were going to win. Legion of Boom was going to win that Super Bowl, but then the next one that they went to, a dude wanted to throw a slant. I don't know why he did it, and we know what happened with that the, the second Super Bowl that they should have had. But the Legion of Boom was so dominant, you knew that certain things were going to happen. This is, you got to get it through your head, right? Derek Carr is not leading you anywhere. Okay, um, it's just not going to work out. So as you guys go through this process of however long he's going to be in New Orleans, you guys are not going anywhere. I just want to be very, very clear, upfront, honest. Like I don't want to be beating around the bush. Like, yo, it's a chance, not a chance. All right, you guys are three and four and one and two at home. You suck. Now let's jump over to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, not really a crazy stat line. Twenty of twenty-nine, two hundred and four yards. All right, one touchdown. 84 QBR with a hundred percent passer rating. Now, why was his passer rating so much better? Because he took what was there. He's had games where he's just been outrageously inaccurate and he sucked, but he was pretty decent. Now, I've been hearing a lot about how good the New Orleans Saints defense is and all that stuff. When it was time, ETN did whatever he wanted. 
You know what I'm saying? I know he only had 53 yards rushing, but he was really decent with everything else that he did. And he helped with those two touchdowns, obviously, uh, to get the Jaguars where they needed to be. Now, late in the game, when Christian Kirk took that for like 60 yards, I don't know how long it was. Those pursuit angles by the Saints were just horrible. Like I posted it on X like, yo, why are you playing Madden, dude? Like dudes are acting like they don't see the guy in front of them. This is what I firmly believe, right? If I'm in front of you, and I have the speed that makes me eligible to be an NFL player, you're not gonna run past me if I'm looking right at you and you're within reach. Like, I'm not gonna take an angle where I know I can't tackle you. And they all took angles like they were blind. And I don't know why that happened, but that was the end of the game. Now, when you look at the way the game progressed, it was 17 to six at the half. The Saints made a run late in the game. This could have been anybody's game when it was tied, but we knew. We knew exactly what was gonna happen when it came down to it, when Derek Carr got the ball back. Everybody knew. It ain't no Tom Brady situation going on here. Y'all about to lose. The 504 boys, get yourself some gumbo. You about to lose. You know what I'm saying? You guys knew what was gonna happen and you just sat there and dealt with it. But that's not what this is about. We gotta talk further about what was happening. You know what I'm saying, bro? The Jaguars tried their best to give this game to the Saints. And yet still, the Jaguars are three and oh away. And they're five and two. They're five and two overall. So just just hear the hear me out. It's similar to what the Bills and the Giants did. The Bills were trying to give the Giants the game, and they just suck. And that's the thing about the Saints. They they're not. I don't know what we're getting now. Kamara adds a different dimension. I know you fantasy guys were like, "Yo, get into the end zone, get into the end zone." It, you know, he got a two point conversion, but that's ultimately you know all he got. He didn't really get anything else outside of that. He had the twelve receptions for ninety one yards, but again. I don't know what people are expecting from the Saints and what you guys would like me to say about them, but I gotta tell you the truth. Now look, Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers, right? Everybody laughed about the fact that he was a starting QB. Remember what's going on in that division. All you Saint fans were telling me that the Bucs are the worst team in the division in the South over there. Don't forget that you guys told me that. Cause I was telling, I was look, right away I told you guys when he was signed, Derek used car, AKA bro, Skip Bayless going wild. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I knew they weren't gonna be successful. Not because solely Derek Carr, but because the team itself is not what it once was. But I wanna say this though. Olave, I, I don't know exactly you know what the deal is, but I would probably say Jameis Winston would be a better fit. Cause at least he has a big arm. He's gonna throw 95,000 picks, but at least he get the ball down the field. People forget that before Tom Brady went back to the bucket, went over to the Buccaneers and won a Super Bowl, Jameis threw for 5,000 yards. Jameis Winston can make plays. He's just like, something's wrong with him. Like he don't know really what's going on most of the time, but he can actually, I, I think, he could actually do a better job than Derek Hughes Carr. And, and that, look, guys, it's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys could, you know, whatever, you know, maybe he is trash, dude, I don't know. But just watching Derek Carr play and knowing that he's gonna throw an interception, and again, was it his fault? I don't think the the, uh, the tip pick six was his fault. When a ball is tipped, the quarterback is like, oh, here we go, dude. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's like, oh my God, here we go. But it just always seems to follow him. So the Jags looking pretty decent. Let me just go ahead and tell you guys what's gonna happen with the Jags. The Jags are not gonna compete in the playoffs for do do do. They could probably make the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? But they're not gonna really do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, gonna be, oh yeah, bro, they're gonna upset somebody. Like, that's not gonna happen. Like, this ain't the team with like Ramsey and all them savages. Like, no, that's not gonna happen. But they are playing well. They're a young team. We have to see how it works out, you know, going forward. Um, but overall, the, the prime games haven't really been good. This game was a little exciting towards the end when the Saints made it a game and they tied it up. But just to give you guys an assessment, the Jacksonville Jaguars are not really doing anything right now this year. You know, I would be shocked if they win a playoff game, but I wouldn't be shocked if they made the playoffs because they're playing tough enough. But as far as what they're going to do, these two teams, I don't know what they're doing, to be honest, but kudos to the Jaguars for beating a, a, a lesser team than them and handling business. It was really nice to see. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the game, bro. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the podcast and uh, what we're bringing you here at G Miles World Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us. You guys have a beautiful and blessed day. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love, y'all.